Greetings everyone, I'm Claudine Colley and welcome to the program Voices. We're coming to you from the headquarters of the North Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists located in the Bahamas' second city, Freeport, Grand Bahama. And with me today is the principal of the Grand Bahama Academy of Seventh-day Adventists in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Mrs. Ruth Roll. Welcome, Mrs. Roll. Thank you very much, Mrs. Colley. And Mrs. Roll is here to tell us some about herself, her experience in the field of education and the Grand Bahama Academy. Tell us, Mrs. Roll, children all over the Bahamas know of you, Mrs. Roll. Tell us a little about Ruth Roll. I'm the first of 11 children born to Mr. and Mrs. George A. Zonico. I was born in Nassau, grew up there, went to Bahamas Academy, and um, I have six sisters, two brothers. Most of them reside in Nassau. Okay, share, share with us some, Mrs. Rule, your teaching experience. I understand that you've been teaching for over 40 years. Share with us some of your teaching experience. Yes, after completion of high school, I went to Canada for my tertiary education, and I remained there and taught in British Columbia for quite a number of years. And I came home and taught in the government for three and a half years. Then I went back to school and worked and returned to Canada to work for another seven or so years. And finally I came home in 84. And I've been here now for 30 years teaching at Grand Bahama Academy. So you do have some experience teaching in non-Adventist schools? Well, I taught at Stephen Dill for three and a half years. Not very long, but we had, I taught there. And uh, we had, um, Stephen Dill is it's a sit school situa situated in uh, Nassau, where we have pods. So I was in, in working with one of those pods, one of those group situations where we taught the children, give them the input, and then they separated different areas to do their work. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, tell us some, Ms. Rule. That's very interesting. Tell us some about your personal philosophy of education. I believe every child can learn. And I want to do everything in my power to help that child to succeed. Each child needs to have successes in their lives. And sometimes you have to work differently with the children to determine which way they learn so you can um, make sure they experience their successes in their lives. And just loving the children and supporting them and once they respect and they realize you have their best interests at heart, they'll do their part and put forth the effort and they will learn. Okay, and what is the contrast or the difference between, or the similarities between your philosophy of education and the Seventh-day Adventist philosophy of education? Well, being a Seventh-day Adventist all my life, I think it's similar in that we teach the child to succeed here in, on this world, get them prepared for the workplace, and to make a living, but more so you have to love the child, teach the child about Christ. So they must realize that there's a judgment, right. that they prepare themselves. And our goal is to really encourage our children to make Christ their Savior so we can be saved, in this, saved when Christ comes. And everything we do should be Christ-centered, pushing the child or challenge, challenging um, the child towards Christ because He's of great importance. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. how, how long, you mentioned that you taught at other schools. You taught in Canada, you taught in Nassau at Stephen Dillard. How long were you teaching at Grand Bahama Academy? It's my 30th year. Wow. I came home in 84. It's wow. my 30th year. Okay, yes. so you were at Grand Bahama Academy from its inception? No, no. Uh, the school was opened, established in 1981. Okay. I came home in 1984. Okay. So I was here shortly after, but not at the inception. Okay, tell us some about Grand Bahama Academy, the institution, the makeup of the institution. Well, as I said before, Grand Bahama Academy was established in 1981 by Mrs. Ruth McKinney. She's our first principal. The school's located at the YMCA. They were there for a year. Then they transferred to the Freeport Church and were there for quite a few years from K-3 all the way to grade nine. But because of spacing problems and financial concerns, uh, the school was um, reverted back to primary school. Okay. They dropped the junior high program. Okay. And uh, in 2000, in 1998, 
we relocated to Grassman, where we are now, and tore across the San Juan Roads. And we have a plot of five acres and that the port allowed to Grandmom Academy with the intention of giving us additional acreage as the school developed. Right. We have a population now of 253 students okay. and about 21 teachers. The school is doing well. There's a business program and there's the science program. And the students beside the course subjects can also do Spanish, uh, uh, family life, and do art and music, you know. We're still in the process of improving our school, so there are needs there, as in most schools. But uh, we're doing the best we possibly can. Okay, what about the population um, as it applies to Adventist and non-Adventist students? Well, there's more non-Adventist than Adventist. Somehow, our Adventist population have not bought into Christian education. Okay. And so it seems as if the non-Adventist parents appreciate our school more so than the Adventist parents. Wow. Yes. Uh, the Adventist parents send them there because of the good moral training. Uh, they know we teach um, the Bible and we groom the children and, and uh, in, in good behavior. Right. And um, so I don't think the Adventist population realize the importance of working together with the school right. for the benefit of their children. Right. You know, some say it's too expensive, but then to the child seem to have all the gadgets they need. Right, right, right. They go on vacations. Yes. They go all out for that. But we must realize our children's soul salvation is of greatest Most importance. Important, right. you, we believe one way at home. The church believes the same way. The school believes the same way. Right. All working together for the benefit of the child. Right. So it's more of a holistic approach. Yes, it is. Right. Yes, it is. Um, as principal, you're, you're, this is your first year returning as yes. principal. <laughs> you've, you've, done, you've been principal how many times at Grand Bahama Academy? It's the third time. <laughs> okay, so now this year, as principal of Grand Bahama Academy, what kind of goals do you have for the school? We need an increase in enrollment. Okay. We definitely need more students. Mm -hmm. And also, we need to increase our programs offerings. We'd like to implement vocational classes, because all children aren't academically inclined. So we need some vocational classes. It would be nice to have uh, maybe woodwork, or a home ec for the uh, girls. Right, skills. Skills, That's yes. Right. Book, yes. Okay. So you are, um, you recently attended a conference in Mexico for teachers of the Inter-American Division. How was that experience? Tell us some about that, who you took with you and um, what the entire experience was like for you, not only as principal of the school, but as an educator in the Adventist school. Well, we went along with our educational director, Mrs. Desiree Rowe Forbes, and um, we had Miss Althea Jervis Webb with us, representing the Early Learning Center, and I went at the time to represent the primary, because when my name was placed there, I was the first grade teacher. Okay, good. And then um, Mrs. Samantha Thomas went to represent the high school. It was nice being there having all those people from all over the Inter-American Division just there for the benefit of the children and being inspired by presenters there. We learned that the child is of greatest importance right. and we do all in our power to make sure that child succeeds here in this world but more so be prepared to meet our Lord when he comes. Okay, and in your interaction with the other educators that attended the conference, what one thing, one experience, one comment one moment of sharing would you take away and take to Grand Bahama Academy to impact the life of if only one child at the school? Each child is important. God died for each and every one of us and because we're interacting with them, we have to do within all within our power to make sure we impact that child positively for the Lord. Okay, you, you mentioned um, in talking about the non-Adventist and the Adventist population at the school that Adventist parents don't see the need to, to um, or do not understand the importance of sending their children to an Adventist school. 
you have Adventist children in the school that are there that are quite possibly um, thinking about a career in education. What would you say to them about trying to educate themselves to to come back and teach in the Adventist school, not only here in the Bahamas, but in the conference or an Adventist school in general? Our church in the years to come will need workers. Right. And so once we've equipped ourselves and because we have the Lord's work at heart, I think we'll be willing to come back to teach in our schools or work in our churches or go on mission fields and to, uh, to tell others about Christ soon return. So anyone uh, is possible to equip themselves and once you have the desire and the love for Christian education to work in most fields, you know, sharing Christ's love with others around. Right. Yeah. Um, um, the students will hear you and perhaps they would say, well, Miss Roll, I want to be an educator. Why? I mean, what's the big deal? Why do I have to come back to teach in an Adventist school? In the public schools, I don't know if you have the liberty to teach religion as we can in Adventist schools. You know, yes, we are educationally based, but also our education is Christ-centered. Everything is structured around Christ. What would Christ do in any situation? Right. And so because of our belief in Christ's soon re return, we have to prepare the children. And if you teach elsewhere, you may not have as great an opportunity to do so as you can in our schools. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What, what, what would you say to them about career, job, from your personal um, experience, career slash job versus ministry in education? A career, what comes to mind, salary. How much salary <laughs> you can get <laughs> right. and your benefits. Right. Whereas a ministry, that is something you love to do. Right. You know, so you put your whole self into it. And once you have Christ in your life and you're into Adventist Christian education, you go all out. Late hours, be the tune to your home, interacting with them personally, you get to know what they're going through, you can sympathize with them, empathize with them, help them in many different ways. So a ministry is more holistic in that you deal with a child in all aspects of the child's life and you help wherever possible. Yes, you get your salary, but that's not the main thrust. Your main right. is to just to love the kids and to get them ready for Christ's soon return. Do, do, is that your experience with the teachers at Grand Bahama Academy that they view um, their time at Grand Bahama Academy more as a ministry as opposed to a career or a job? I think so, yes, because quite often we go beyond our requirements as, as a teacher and it's only because it's a ministry that that is happening. Okay, this is a very interesting conversation, Mrs. Rule. We're going to take a break now, and when we come back, we'll talk more about you personally, what your experiences have been um, in education, not only Adventist, but when you taught in the other schools. You know, I had an experience in college. You know, that time when it's crunch time and all the work is on your shoulders, and you're trying to figure out how you can get all this done in time. You know. After thinking about it after a while, I went to a friend. And you know what he told me? He said, you know, pray. You know, ask God for help. I'm sure he's willing and ready to help you in your situation. So I took his advice. I prayed. And you know, as I prayed, I thought of a scripture text. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men always ought to pray and not to faint. You know, Jesus is saying, in other words, when we pray, don't lose heart. You know, and after that prayer, I, I struggled a bit, but I kept on going. I didn't lose heart. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're faced with, Jesus is willing and ready to help you with any situation. Remember, pray and don't lose heart. Welcome back to the program Voices. I'm Claudine Colley, 
And with me in studio is Mrs. Ruth Roll. She is the principal at Grand Bahama Academy of Seventh-day Adventists. Mrs. Roll, before we um, went to the break, we were talking about your experiences as an educator, your travel to Mexico, and um, what you would say to young persons coming up uh, that wanted to pursue a career in education. Tell us, many people say that um, they can't afford a Seventh-day Adventist education. Is, is a Seventh-day Adventist education expensive? I don't think so. Our tuition is similar to the schools here in Grand on Grand Bahama. It's not the most expensive, nor is it the cheapest, but it is compatible with uh, the cost of living here. And uh, to me, dealing with children, and because we think of their soul salvation, nothing can be more expensive expensive than that right you right. know so that has to be paramount in a parent's mind my parents had 11 children as I said 10 grew up as to adults and they sacrificed my mom to stay home mom and daddy went to work and he put his children through Bahamas Academy and until he could no longer do so but he had the love of his children and knowing that he wanted what's best for them and knowing that the school was helping them to um, live the way they should, to help right. train them, so he sacrificed. Today, I don't see too many parents being too sacrificial right. towards their children. Right. Maybe it is happening, possibly so, but back then, we knew it's a church school, we belong to the church, and so, so our children must go to the church school. Right. Nowadays, parents are Adventists, yes, but they don't see anything wrong with sending their children elsewhere. They don't make a determined effort to put them in the church school. Right. That seems to be lacking. Okay, and then, and then parents would probably say, well, you know, why should I put my child um, in the Adventist school and pay for an Adventist True, education, yes. free. and right, I can get a free education, and my child probably only gets C's. Mm -hmm. Or how about the parent that has uh, a, a good student that just does well, and they can get an A in the public school, as well as come to Grand Bahama Academy or any other Adventist school and get an A. The parents might say, well, you know, why should I put my child in an Adventist school if they can get an A in a public school? What, what would you say to that parent? Our, our standard in the school is very high. Our students do receive A's as, well as they do in the public school, but our children are spiritually minded. Okay, okay. Our children are spiritually minded. They want, um, they, they know Christ, and they encourage others around them to know Christ. I know of a situation where some years ago, a child died during the school year. The child had just been notified that they had made passes in BJCs, got A's. And during the summer, the accident, the child died. The father was pleased to know his child had done well academically, but his concern was, what was my child thinking before she wow. died? You know, And we were able to assure him the child knew the Lord, right. and we had taught the children, and any situation you are in can always call upon the Lord. Right. So that brought him comfort, knowing his child, with her knowing she's about to die, would have probably called upon the Lord. Right. You know? right. So you can't stress enough the importance of the child knowing Christ for him or herself. Right. That relationship has to be developed. Wow. And in the Christian school, in the Grand Mom Academy, that relationship is encouraged. Right, wow, that's, yeah. that's, that's an amazing story. Yes. So I, I would imagine that the teachers would take from that and be encouraged because of that particular story. Mm -hmm. um, share with us some of your personal experiences teaching at Grand Bahama Academy, coming from the classroom and into the office, and some of your experiences with the children in the, in the, um, in the classroom. I love being in the classroom. I'm a first grade teacher. And so if I had a preference, I would stay there. But I've had children come into my class, come from other schools, and the parents said, 
They were told the child could not read or could not learn to read and that they were really desperate. And quite often in years past, we were more so than now, known as a school that would help children who are academically slow. Right. You know? right. So I would take the children and we'd, we'd work with them and they would learn to read. And the parents would be so elated. Wow. And the children themselves, they would just light up, yes. beaming smile. I did it. I can do it. Right. I'm not dumb. Right. You right. know. So um, these experiences reinforces my desire to help each child learn. Right. You know. Right. Any child can learn, not at the same pace, but they can get there. Just keep plodding along and never giving up on the child. Right. Yes. yes. You you said that you would prefer to be in the classroom. Yes. And because you felt like any child can learn. But I, I, I sense that it's deeper than that. Share with us why you would prefer to be in the classroom, and especially with those little ones. I love children. They're very affectionate. Right. You give them a hug. Right. They give you a kiss. Tell you, I love you, and they return it. Right, right. And they, they have an innocent spirit, you know. And you can talk to them about the Lord, and they just accept what you say. Yes, so yes. they'd be so careful how you teach them. Yes, it has yes. to be the truth. Mm -hmm. It has to be Bible-based. Right. I just love children and like the little ones. Love the little ones. Right. Uh -huh. um, you, you taught at the Adventist School. You spoke about some teaching in Canada. Mm -hmm. Share with us some of your experiences teaching in Canada. Well, I taught in one-room schools in Canada. Wow. So I had uh, grades one, sometimes to grades up to grade eight, I did not necessarily having all the grades, right. but I had fewer kids, but they were all in varied grades throughout uh, the classroom. So you just set one to work, have someone else doing something else, going from group to group. It's like wow. homeschooling from group to group, working with the children. Wow, yes, wow. and it was total ten years in total. I taught in Canada. Wow. Yes. How 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 different or similar was it, especially as it relates to culture with teaching the children in Canada and here in the Bahamas? The children seemed, because in, in, the, in the country areas, they wanted to learn, okay. and they came there knowing they had to finish their ac academic program, and so they would apply themselves. Some of them weren't as fortunate as we are, and so their main aim was to do well in school. Nowadays, it seems to be reversed. It's things the children have. Wow. You know? Yes. And their behavior is not always the best because they want to have their own way and they aren't as obedient. Mm. You know? Mm. So you, you, you would say that because we tend to um, give more to our children or because our children are blessed in a temporal way. Mm -hmm. They don't view education the same way the students in Canada from the country who had little mm -hmm. would view education. That's right. Wow. They appreciate what they had. Wow. And even those, say, a one-room school, they attended, they paid their tuition, and they did the best they possibly could. Wow. You know? And the, some parents had to sacrifice right. to pay their tuition fees. Right. Yeah. Wow. We, we, we know that. Many may not be aware, but recently there was a fire at Grand Bahama Academy. Tell mm -hmm. us some about that and the impact that it is having on the school. Well, I've seen God's guidance. You know, when I arrived at school, uh, the PDA president was there, Mr. Charles Stewart, and he was commenting on what a good sprinkler system we have. Wow. I'm thinking, we don't have a sprinkler system, <laughs> but I can hear water trickling down. Right. And because the fire was inside there, apparently the water pipe, the heat burst the, the pipe, so the water came down. That was the sprinkling system. Wow. Outside the tuck shop, there's a huge gas tank. And only because of God's leading and providence, His mercies, that the whole complex did not go, under, uh, uh, go ablaze. Wow. Yes, it's fire damage. The kitchen, the kitchen that tuck shop has been destroyed internally, but still no lives were lost. And structurally, I think we can, after making the repairs, continue on. God has indeed been leading, not only in this instance, but for a small school, we don't have all the problems 
some larger schools have. Right. And working with the children, teaching them spiritual truths, they give their lives to the Lord. And so we don't have some of the major right. uh, problems they have. Yes, we have children coming in with issues, but after talking with them, praying with them, interacting with them, they tend to change. Right. So God has indeed been good to us. Every morning I tend to ask the Lord, give me a double portion of your spirit, Lord. Wow, wow. Please be with my immediate family, the school family, and the church family. Right. And everyone, teachers, when we have worship in the morning, we present the students to the Lord and ask for the Lord's blessing, his covering that day. Right. And doing this each and every day. Wow. Sometimes the students think we are on their cases when we get after their behavior. But we just want them to be a better child, a better person, right. knowing that they have a savior to meet. Right. So in, you, you would say in the midst of this tragedy of a, of a fire, the school saw a miracle of God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. We just look back and, and, and see God's work and think it could have been worse. Right. You know, but because of God's providence, we still have a school. We can still function. And we can still praise his name for his many blessings. Okay. We're, we're winding down, Mrs. Rule, but before we go, tell us, what, what would you say is the one thing, if you could name one thing that is needed at Grand Bahama Academy, what would that one thing be? I think we need some resources for teaching um, to, to reach some of our children who are, say, technically minded. Right. So we need like a smart board would be nice. Also, we need more finances. Right. But we definitely need the support of the constituency. Right. If they would send their children to Grand Bahama Academy, that will help with the finances, and we can get probably some of the other um, resources we need to teach the children. Right. But the support would be very, very nice from all the different churches. Right. right. Everyone doing his or her part. The thing about Grand Bahama in prayer, but also doing whatever they can to help the school to be a beacon in this community. Well, Mrs. Rowell, thank you very much for sharing with us here on Voices. It's been a delightful time. I'm sure that our viewing audience has enjoyed it and they've learned more about the school, more about Grand Bahama Academy, and probably some are willing to step up to the plate and assist Grand Bahama Academy. Mm -hmm. So we say thank you thank and we you. pray God's blessings on the school, on your time there as principal of the school, that the school continues to grow. And of course, I'm sure that um, the constituents of North Bahamas Conference will heed your word and support the school. Viewers, we thank you for joining us on the program Voices. We hope that you enjoyed the time with us. We say Godspeed until we meet again here on Voices coming to you from the North Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Several days ago, I received an email from a friend of mine in the United States who was traveling from one of the bigger cities in the United States to another city in another part of the United States that would take 50 minutes. And while they were getting comfortable on the flight, the pilot did something very unusual, something that doesn't happen today. The pilot left the cockpit, came into the uh, area where the passengers were, and the pilot did two things. The pilot said that we are going to have some turbulence on this flight. It's going to be a rough flight. However, uh, no one need to be afraid because I will always be with you. That reminds me of a text found in John 16, verse 33, where we are reminded that in this life, we will always have tribulations. We will have trials and difficulties. And so those of us who are facing challenges, uh, difficulties in life, uh, please be reminded that our dear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, said to us in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, he says that I will always be with you. I will never leave you when the things get rough. And so those of us who are going through can remember that Jesus will be our lawyer and he has promised to be our judge. Can you imagine that when we are in trouble that Jesus Christ, the great judge, will also be our lawyer? What a beautiful situation to find ourselves in. And so my friends, always remember that whatever you're going through, Jesus will be 